and the shadow deputy leader out on the, the picket line, uh, Mr. Speaker, backing the strikers, Mr. Speaker, while we back the strivers. Well, imagine the shock for the Prime Minister when he finds out that those fighting for a decent wage for a day's work are the strivers. We've spent £16 billion looking after the railways, Mr Speaker, throughout the pandemic. That's cost every household £600. Again, imagine the shock for the Prime Minister when he finds out that money went to the train operators who have made huge profits, not the RMT and certainly not their members. What we're actually doing is putting, uh, thanks to the decisions we've taken, we are putting more money into the pockets of people up and down the country. We've got the highest UK taxation in 70 years, the biggest drop in living standards since 1956, and the lowest projected growth of any major country except sanctioned Russia. Average wages in the UK are falling at the fastest rate for more than two decades, and it just gets worse. The OBR has found average real wages will actually be lower in 2026 than they were in 2008. Five million public sector, pay, public sector workers are getting a pay rise, Mr Speaker. The median public sector pay award was just 1.4% in the year to March 2022. Again, imagine the Prime Minister's shock when he finds out inflation has passed 9% and will likely hit 11% in the autumn. So they've all had a massive real terms pay cut. Uh, we've increased universal credit so that people get a thousand pounds more. But imagine the Prime Minister's shock when he finds out the Chancellor has cut universal credit, actually cut it by a thousand pounds a year at a time when the cost of food, energy and fuel prices are soaring. The policy Johnson's talking about only applies to the 40% of people receiving the benefit who are actually in work. It won't make a blind bit of difference to the remaining 60%. That's 5.3 million claimants who aren't in work, and he knows it. 